Hi friends, I'm Alicia Hart with Vitality Northwest and today I'm going to tell you how to make a mustard plaster which is your great grandmother's way for treating that hacking ugly cough that's going around. Now you don't usually hear people talk about mustard plasters anymore but let me tell you in 1905 they were a big deal in the New England Journal of Medicine particularly for that big nasty hacking cough that's going around. You don't need almost anything to make it. Probably you already have everything in your cupboards. And so I'm gonna take this flour. I'm celiac, so this is actually coconut flour. You don't even need flour flour. You just need some sort of ground up substance. And you'll note that this is not a measuring spoon. This is just a spoon. Um, this is a proportion, not a measurement. So I'm gonna put in two spoonfuls of the coconut flour. And then I'm gonna take mustard powder. This is literally the mustard that you would turn into um, a cooking dish. Maybe I should have opened it first. I'm gonna take the same amount of mustard. Now mustard is the active part of the mustard plaster. And so if you have somebody that's a little bit more fragile, like a tiny child, you should do less mustard and more flour because this is a pretty powerful therapy. For being something that you have in your kitchen already, you've got these two powders here. I'm just gonna mix them up. Now that you've got the mustard and the flour mixed together, add a little bit of water, just enough to make it into a paste. You don't need it to be a soup. You can see that it's about dough-like consistency here. Maybe a little bit thinner than pie dough, but not too thin, okay? So you've got this all mixed into a paste, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna get some cheesecloth, or I just have some gauze here, and you're going to take the mustard that you've mixed into the flour, and you're going to put it right on to this gauze. You can tell that my camera stand doesn't like being at that angle, huh? Anyway, get it in there and you're gonna smoosh it in between these two layers. If you are using this with a dishcloth or a cloth that you'd like to use again, keep that in mind. Now I've got this square of squished up mustard and flour in gauze. And some olive oil. Coconut oil works fine, so does vegetable oil. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this oil and you're just gonna put it on whatever surface you're gonna do. I'm gonna do my arm because first of all, I am ghostly white, so you're gonna see how fast this mustard plaster brings blood to the area. So then I'm just going to put it on my arm. I'm going to kind of tie it there with another piece of gauze. And I'm also going to wipe off the extra olive oil that's now trying to get onto my nice clothes. So what we're doing here with the mustard plaster is we're bringing blood to the area. This type of treatment is called a rubefacient, and that just means that it makes it red. Um, in the New England Journal of Medicine, this was the grade one therapy for pneumonia and bronchitis, which is how I learned about it, because my oldest child is a little pneumonia factory. He likes to get pneumonia every year, and surprisingly, I'm not a fan of that. So I started researching a bunch of different ways, because I didn't want to put him in on antibiotics every winter unless I had to. And now, the first thing I do when he starts getting that nasty hacking cough is a mustard plaster. So I do this to his entire chest, basically. And what I do is I've got the plaster on over that oil coating, and I set him there, and I leave him for maybe 15 minutes with it on. I usually wrap an ace bandage around him because he's four and he's fast. Um, I like to check it every five minutes for him because he will not always tell me that something is hot. For the smallers, for the twins, I would check it every two minutes. Um, 
what you're looking for, and I'll see if it's, it's not quite the color gradient that I was hoping for here. Um, but it's only been a couple minutes, so I'm gonna give myself a couple more minutes. Uh, you're looking for surface redness. And you want to not put this on before you go to sleep because you can actually blister your skin with this. This is not something you wanna leave on for more than 20 minutes. Um, and most people don't even tolerate 20 minutes, so check on it early rather than later. But some of the things that are very nice about this therapy is that you've probably already got this stuff in your cabinet to use. It is not contraindicated in pregnancy or lactation, so if you're pregnant or nursing, you are totally safe to do this for your cold, and almost nothing else is safe for you, is it, ladies? Um, and it's safe to use on children, as long as they can tell you that they are having the sensation of heat, or if you are checking very, very carefully, because they don't want you to blister anybody's skin. So that is how you make a mustard plaster, and now you can see my ghostly whiteness. This pink area here is all blood that's been brought to the surface. So now that I'm done with it, I'm gonna take my extra piece of gauze that I was just using for water later, and we're gonna just wipe off everything that's left there. You see how different that color gradient is? Maybe not with this light. Trust me or try it yourself. Once you're done with it, if you've just used gauze or something that you don't want to wash, you can just throw it away. It's non-toxic, biodegradable. You can throw it in your compost if you want to. Some other fun facts about mustard plasters is that they were extensively used during the flu epidemic of 1918, the Spanish flu. Um, that is mostly what they had at that point to treat the flu, and people who got mustard plasters more frequently tended to live. I'm just gonna go through the steps of the mustard plaster one more time. You're going to take equal parts of ground dry mustard and flour, whatever flour you use, it's up to you, and you're going to mix them together, then you're gonna use a little bit of a warm water paste, and you're going to put that on, you're gonna use warm water to turn the mustard and the flour into a paste. You're gonna sandwich that between two thin layers of cloth, and you're gonna put the cloth on there. You're not putting the paste right on the skin, you're putting it on the cloth. It will go through the cloth. Then you're going to fasten it to the body, either with an ace bandage, or you're going to have the kiddo or you laying prone so that it's staying on you. And then you're going to check on the skin underneath it every couple minutes to make sure that you're not getting too heated. You're gonna be really careful if you're using this on anybody who can't tell you that they are too hot because you can blister the skin with this. It is not a light treatment. It is a safe treatment as long as it's managed adequately. You're gonna leave it on for no more than 20 minutes. You're gonna take it off and then you're gonna rinse the skin there. Then you're going to reapply it every four to six hours, as long as it takes. They are going to cough after they have this because it's loosened up all of the phlegm in the lungs. So I don't usually do this at night. I do this during the day when they're up, when their coughing is not gonna bother me or when I'm not going to be bothered by coughing a lot. Um, I like to take a warm bath after I do this to myself. I like to put the kids in the bath. Getting those mustard oils off of your skin is pretty important. And that's how you make a mustard plaster that is safe for nursing, for pregnancy, and for kids.